Greetings from the Grand Canyon State. I was hoping for this to be a much longer season, and it will be, eventually. But this is the last episode of this particular trip. And if you stick around until the end, you'll find out what happened. What sequence of events cut our journey short. By the way, great route to take if you like trains. And here's a rare appearance of an Amtrak passenger train. They are not all that common. And I still don't know what the thing is. Our final destination, Quartzsite, Arizona. But first we have to get there. And we're all about the journey as much as the destination, so enjoy the ride. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Well, this is called Texas Canyon, even though it is in Arizona. And this westbound rest area right here, probably one of the most picturesque in all of Interstate 10. Texas Canyon, huh? Some uh, contemporary petroglyphs. We're now approaching Benson, Arizona, and while we're not gonna stop anywhere except a supermarket to resupply, it should be a very scenic drive all the way to our overnight location. We're now approaching the Tucson area, and we can already see Mount Lemon covered in snow behind this Shoya cactus field. There is so much to see and do in the Tucson area, actually, probably my favorite big city in Arizona. But today we're just stopping for groceries, and whenever I'm in this area, I like to visit Fry's. They are usually huge and have everything you could possibly need. Besides, it is fun to explore different supermarket chains around the country and see what they might have that others don't. Did you know Mount Lemon Ski Valley is the southernmost ski resort in the continental United States? And I just love these views of the downtown skyline with Mount Lemon in the background. We were here back in 2021, and we'll be here again, I promise. As we continue west, I can't help but notice the silhouette of Picacho Peak and Pinal Air Park, an aircraft storage facility. I'm going to reminisce because during my first cross-country road trip ever back in 2018, I drove through here my first encounter with Arizona. I mean, I had been to the Grand Canyon before, but it's not the same as driving and seeing the gradual changing scenery and ecosystem. At some point, I looked to the left and saw all these little twigs sticking out of the slope and all of a sudden, I realized there were also wire cacti. Thousands of them. It is a moment I will never forget. Years later, in 2021, I actually climbed to the top of Picacho Peak, which was another great experience. We're gonna take Interstate 8, which shoots straight west, bypassing Phoenix. Yeah, crossing the Phoenix metropolitan area is never fun, especially towing. And I-8 is such a beautiful drive, with so many saguaros. This is where we're gonna stay, at the Sonoran Desert RV Park, formerly the Gila Bend KOA. So here we have half an onion and a Japanese knife. So we're gonna chop that onion, as you do. Melt some butter 
And tell you what, I'm gonna do another onion because we love onion and half an onion is just not enough. A little bit of salt and the whole green pepper sliced. Actually, I forgot the rest of the onions and more salt and black pepper. And I'm going to smash and peel some garlic, but first, let me move this around. Of course, mince that garlic. A little more salt, and you must be asking yourselves, what are we cooking today? Well, paprika, oregano, cumin, turmeric, and a little marinara sauce, and hot sauce, mm, so aromatic, and some cooking wine, and we've been thawing some jumbo shrimp. This dish is called camarones enchilados, which is basically shrimp in a creole sauce. The recipe originated in Haiti, brought to Cuba by Haitian immigrants during the Haitian Revolution in the late 18th century. the color on that sauce hmm. oh yeah well good morning hold on let me put it on tow mode just because on tow mode it doesn't uh, the, the, the the automatic engine stop doesn't uh, activate um in any case here sonoran desert rv resort or rv park one of the two I don't know what the difference is. Um, very nice. This is actually my third time here. This is usually my go-to place before or after left. Quartzite. Turn right. uh, it's about two hours away and it's immaculately clean, nice laundry. And uh, yeah, this used to be the Hilla Bend KOA the first time I came here. Many people don't like these brown-colored desert mountains, but to me, there is something specially alluring about them. Inexplicable. That would be Palo Duro, the largest nuclear power plant in the United States, and the only one in the world not located near a large body of water. It uses treated sewage for cooling. The more you know. I just love this stretch of Interstate 10 going through the Sonoran Desert, looking at the horizon in anticipation, hoping the next hill may reveal our final destination. There it is! Let me zoom in. We can even see the big tent. During the last week of January, Quartzite hosts the sports, vacation and RV show. And the big part of that is the big tent. And that is happening this week as we film this. We're also taking part in the Q23 YouTubers meetup. The main thing about Quartzite and why so many people decide to spend their winters here, boondocking in their RVs, is, besides the relatively mild climate, the 2500 inhabitant town is surrounded by public Bureau of Land Management land. And this land is also relatively flat, so it is perfect for camping. To the north side of town you have High Jolly and Plomosa Road, the Scatton Wash to the east and Dome Rock to the west. And all these are completely free for up to 14 days, with no services. To the south there is La Posa Long-Term Visitors Area or LTVA, divided into La Posa North, La Posa West, La Posa South and Tyson Wash. Here we are arriving at La Posa South LTVA, which offers pet toilets, dump stations, potable water and trash collection for a fee. 
the LTVA charges $40 for 14 days or $180 for the whole 7-month season, and you can stay at several different locations. As you can imagine, a lot of people from colder climates find this very appealing as a way to spend their winters for very little money. Here in the desert, there are no addresses, so everything works by GPS coordinates, and finding your way along all these makeshift roads made by the ones who were here before us. And we have arrived at the location of the Q23 meetup. Yeah, I'm a little confused about where exactly they want me to drop the trailer. As the sun begins to set, the mountains take on this crimson hue, very unique. It is going to be a cold night, so we're going to gather around the campfire, make new friends, and share stories from the road, as you do. Good morning, Quartzite. Mm, it's gonna be another beautiful day here at our campsite. Perfect weather. Let's go check out the big tent. There's the line for the dump station, which will get longer and longer as the week progresses. It is opening day for the big tent, so there is a lot of traffic as we approach Quartzite. And here we have the entrances to La Posa West and La Posa North. Some parts of La Posa West, by the way, walking distance to the big tent, so that's your pro tip of the day. Here on the left is the official entrance to the RV show, but we're gonna go a little further north. This is it. This area is called Tyson Wells. It is a huge swap meet, surrounding the big tent, mostly on the north side. Oh, it is our lucky day! I was very lucky to be able to find parking here at this parking lot. As you can see, this place is packed. I mean, I've never seen this place so full of people. And um, well, let's, let's go to the big tent and maybe we'll get something to eat, something to drink. We'll see. There's a rock, gem and mineral show going on as well, all January and February. And sometimes you find amazing geodes and other things. As you can see, this swap meet is massive. I think if you can't find it here, it does not exist. Of course, there are all kinds of RV accessories, even water pumps, and yeah, they really have everything you might need here. I might add, not everything is RV related. Let's just say there's a very eclectic collection of items for sale here. Hmm, 
maybe I should get a Starlink pole and bracket. Um, there's a lot of solar here too, because we are in the desert, and generally sunlight is abundant in these parts. Let's continue walking towards the big tent, and here they have the homemade ice cream maker. I've heard the machine is just for show, but it's still really good ice cream. And of course, the famous Beer Bellies Adult Daycare. It is a tradition to come here, and who am I to argue with that? Well, cheers, it's a tradition. Well, you know, this place has really filled up. Well, here we are at the big tent. Oh, my voice is gone. Good morning. I thought it was Bob Wells, but no. Good morning. Oh, live music. And it is none other than the border hookups. I've been meaning to meet them. You can Maybe we'll get a chance to say hello later. But now let's go into the big tent. Let's go inside the big tent. When I was here in 2021, the show looked kind of sad. It had been raining the whole week and COVID was still a thing. But in 2023, Quartzite is back, baby. Stronger than ever. In some ways, this is very similar to the supplier's building at the Tampa RV show, but here I think there's more like odd and strange things, and definitely more solar stuff. Yeah, you can either use it for a flagpole or Starlink. We need to get one of those. I like it. We are very cool to be at the big tent once again, and uh, we just met uh, Brian, Adventure Van Man. Feel? Like this, you know, like this, left handed, right handed. It's a truck camper with a bimini top. Where have you seen that? Exo holler. Well, what do you know? I had never seen a truck camper toy hauler with a bimini top. I mean, you get to see all kinds of interesting things here at, at the quartz site. Uh, that's a long name. Let's call it the Quartzite Army Show. You never know who you're gonna run into at the Quartzite Army. It has a long name, but like Quartzite Vacation and uh, Recreation, whatever it's called. The Quartzite Army Show. Here we are with Mikey Barbie, of course. I mooched up with him a couple of years ago. No, a couple of months ago. What's wrong with me? Chris from Electric Bikes. Here we have Ross from RV or TV. Hey. And let's turn it up, world! Yeah. You know, uh, up until yesterday, it felt like everybody was at Tampa, but I think the cool kids are here. <laughs> Ooh, tiny homes. Let's check them out. Actually, this would work out great for our Pelly Camp in Florida. We got a, a wood, wood stove and. Uh, can't get in the bed There's either. just no closets, I think. But it's very cute. We got a refrigerator and uh, well, that's a composting toilet. Mm, that might be the deal breaker right there. We continue walking around the vast swap meet. One of these days, 
One of these days I might get me one of this. Oh, here we are, gringos. And they are from Billings, Montana and Quartzsite, Arizona. Let's check it out. I want hot. It is called a Montana burrito. Mm, bon appetit. In hindsight, I think we should have gotten the carnitas, but what's done, it's done. All right, they had me at espresso. Well, you know me, I gotta have my espresso shot. Now let's uh, let's continue exploring the RV show. Yeah, we're back in beer bellies. A viewer bought me a beer, so I had to do it, right? <laughs> Look what we have here. Well, hello? No, it doesn't work. It's called the media tent. Yeah, this is where they're doing all the seminars this year. I think I know that guy. Oh! <laughs> hey, Hello. Tony, how are you, brother? So look who I ran into here at the at the Quartzsite RV show. It's our friend, Tony from Stressless Camping. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's so great to see you again. It's our our Quartzsite meetup. The, the one thing missing is we don't have beers in our Yeah. What's wrong with us? I know. Well, well last, think, as you know, the, the, the first time we met, it was at... At Bear, 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 Bear Bellies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you have that. And my last GoPro battery died, so let's return to camp. And tomorrow, we'll continue exploring. Lots of traffic here on opening day. Mark Guido of Grand Adventure has arrived. He's got the large Durango fifth wheel. It is really filling up, like a city of RVs out here. Just magical. The colors as the sun starts going down. It is another beautiful morning here at the Q23. 
I find it to be so beautiful out here and the freedom to be off-grid. Before going into town, let's drive around the more densely populated areas of La Posa South. This is one of the shortcuts to get from La Posa onto US 95. But first, let's check out Tyson Wash. It is a lot less crowded on this side. We are back in Quartzite for lunch and we are in the mood for pizza and the best place for that without a doubt is Silly Owls. We are famous Silly Owls. It's still early, but this place is gonna get packed here in a few. Our pie has arrived. This is the famous Silly Owls and this place has really filled up. We continue exploring La Posa South and I want you to pay close attention to the sign coming up on the right. This area is called the Magic Circle. And yes, on a balmy afternoon you may encounter people sunbathing or natural. Now you know. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. We wanted to go back to the big tent, but someone decided it would be a good idea to do a potluck at 3 p.m., so we barely have enough time to cook something. And this is the moment where our troubles began. Illy was helping me out in the kitchen and she accidentally cut her thumb. And I'm pretty sure she needed stitches, but Sunday afternoon in Quartzite is not a good place for a medical emergency. So we managed to stop the bleeding, put some band-aids on and join the party. Our fire ring. Um, I I His name is Sue. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's, oh, you're good? Yeah. It's a Christmas tree. <laughs> Just like that, they turned into night. And it happens to be New Moon. Yeah. 
right there. Windy day in Quartzsite. Good morning. Well, it's almost noon actually. And um, we got some clouds, which is probably going to make for a better sunset. And uh, and uh, it's dusty, but that won't deter us from exploring the queue a little more. Let's do it. Yeah, it looks like someone lost their awning to the wind. Yeah, that's never a good day. And the line for the dump station keeps growing. Lots of blowing dust today and it is cold. I should have done this yesterday. I guess the only way is through Tyson Wells. Oh well. I think these are the remains of an old abandoned mine. All right, let's see if we can go all the way to to the top of Q Mountain here. It's a little steeper than I was expecting. And I to follow the trail Ooh. it is cold there it is the big queue I'm gonna lose my hat. But here we go, here we have 360 views of Quartzsite and all the numerous areas where, where people are camping out here. Look at that. And there's so much land, you know, free land here. So there, that's the big tent. La Cosa West, I believe, La Cosa North, and back there, it's uh, somewhere uh, back there is La Cosa South where we are, and then that over there in the far distance, that will be the Scadden Wash, I believe. That's I-10 and US-95. You know, I always wanted to come up here. That is La Cosa South where we are. There it is, the big tent, and the sun wants to come out. So many RVs parked in this desert. It is bitterly cold, cold up here, so we're going down. I'm going down quickly. I was about to quote the Christmas vacation movie, but let's just say we managed to fill up our black water tank, so an emergency dump is in order. You take a look at that line. There's like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven RVs waiting to, to dump. And uh, I think for, for my $40, they should have more dump stations, to be honest about it. I just dump my trash. We're just gonna do a, a try to dump uh, somewhere in town, campground, and um, next time we're staying at the Scadden Wash. That's all I'm saying. Let's go! The dump station here at La Posa South is ridiculously insufficient for the amount of people here. So we're just gonna go into town and pay at an RV park, and I still have to tell you what happened at the Q Mountain, even though if you follow me on social media, you probably already know. At this moment in the trip, I thought it was just a sprained ankle and I was feeling better, so I didn't give it a second thought. I figured I'd take it easy, 
But at this point, there is still so much to see here in Quartzsite and in California, Nevada, perhaps even Utah. But more about that later. Let's dump right here. They also have a line, but it is not nearly as long. Well, price gouging in Quartzsite for, for dumping and water is definitely a thing. Um, yeah, I'm still limping a little bit from, from that fall. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm starting to rethink my assessment of Quartzsite. I think I like Quartzsite for a couple of days, as long as you don't have to actually dump here or, or, or get water, you know? This is the first time that, I'm st that I've stayed here for more than five days, and uh, I love Quartzsite, but just for a couple of days. Yep, that was definitely Cranky Robert speaking. Now let's get propane, and I think the RV pit stop might be the best place for that. It is a very efficiently run operation. Even though the more sensible thing would have been to go to a larger town like Lake Havasu City or even Phoenix or Vegas, at this point I still think my leg is going to get better and the same with Illy's finger, so we decide to park at Plumosa Road by ourselves and regroup, come up with a new plan if you will. I've never camped in this area and I think I like it. Well, it was a little of a stressful morning and uh, I'm still limping a little bit here, but look at that, the, the wind has died down. And um, as you saw, we moved to Plomosa Road here. I, I had never actually camped in this part, in this area of Quartzsite. And, um, it is very nice, beautiful day here. And I don't know for how long we're gonna stay here at Plomosa, but at least for tonight, for sure. The explorer in me couldn't stay still for too long, so we had to go back into town anyway. I had forgotten to put gas, and we also decided to see some of the points of interest. First, we're going to stop by the cemetery and pay our respects to High Jolly. Born in present-day Greece, he was one of several men hired by the United States Army to introduce camels to transport cargo across the great American desert. In his final years, he moved to Quartzsite, Arizona, where he mined and scouted for the US government. And he died in 1902. Of course, no visit to Quartzsite would be complete without visiting the High Jolly Monument here at the military cemetery. And um, there is, it was a, a camel herder. So, yeah, someone come up, came up with this brilliant idea of using camels during the Civil War to transport stuff. And, uh, well, you can pause and read. Let's stop by the Yacht Club. Yes, it is a Yacht Club in the desert. Isn't that peculiar? While it is mainly a restaurant, they do sell memberships. And thanks to something called reciprocity, that membership card could potentially get you into other Yacht Clubs. Isn't that something? Let's go back to Plomosa Road. There are a couple of things I want to see, and then the escapees are having a happy hour, so we can't miss that. As I said, here are several Easter eggs hiding in plain sight, here in the Sonoran Desert. And in my original plan, we were going to see many of them. But in my current condition, I'm going to settle for just two, here, right off Plomosa Road. And the first one, we have to get off the pavement. Here we are, this is the site of the Quartzsite Rock Alignment. Well, yeah, I'm still limping a little bit. And this is what is called the Quartzsite Rock Alignment. And if you see it from the air, it reads Quartzsite on the ground. And they have this uh, fence here, so, so you can come in by foot, but not by car. And um, yeah, I shouldn't be walking this much, but I want to get to where it is. Well, here we go. This is a queue. It's 
says. Quartz site. Let's see if we can fly the drone. It's not too windy today, by the way. I really love this area back here, like away from everybody else. It would be cool to, to camp here in this wilderness. Now let's go see something called an intaglio or geoglyph, which is basically an engraving on the rock, in this case on the rocky desert surface. This one is a little bit of a hike, which I can't do in my condition, so I'm just going to fly. It is actually rather small, but there it is. It is called the Baus Fisherman. It is anywhere from 500 to 2000 years old. Let's land and get back to the campsite. I want to check out that SKP's happy hour. There they are. Wow, that's a lot of people. Oh yeah, it's a party! Hot dogs, live music, and I even got to meet Brian of the YouTube channel RV with Tito. Oh, yeah, it's been one of those do nothing days here at the Plumosa area. But right now we're gonna do some grilling. There seems to be some big event over there. They have some like a PA system and all that, so. I don't know. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Anyway, cheers. Oh, I just flipped him. Look at that. Mm. Well, bon appetit. Just another lazy day in the desert. But tomorrow we're going to an urgent care in Lake Havasu City, mainly so someone can take a look at Illy's finger because she's lost some movement in her thumb. And my leg hasn't improved much, so might as well get that looked at too.
I've neglected my sticker map for far too long, so let's take care of that and hit the road. To Lake Havasu we go! Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV It is a beautiful drive Drive the pavement rushing under the tires A different time zone You know I'm gonna get higher Cause I'm on fire Riding Have no idea where we'll end up tonight It doesn't matter Cause you know it's gonna feel right Because we're riding Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Because I'm free In my RV so, we came here by the urgent care in Lake Havasu City, and it turns out Illy's injury doesn't require immediate attention. On the other hand, I have a fractured fibula, so they put me in a splint and recommend that I see an orthopedic specialist. You know. There are not many options here in Lake Havasu, so against medical advice, I took that splint off and decided to drive two and a half hours to Las Vegas. I mean, I've been putting weight on it for five days, so what's one more? It is always good to be in a big city for situations like this. More medical choices, Uber, food delivery, and the large airport with direct flights to Miami. Just in case. In my RV, yeah, I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I Because I'm free in my RV, yeah. Well, we've made it to Sin City, Mount Charleston, covered in snow. So we've been here in Las Vegas for about two weeks, and uh, I think that's the longest we stayed at a place uh, camping, or I would hardly call, call it camping. I mean, we've been here. Uh, I went to, to the, the, it's called the Desert Orthopedic uh, Center, and they saw me, they confirmed that I have a fractured fibula, and. Uh, and you know they put me in a boot, this fashionable boot, and uh, and they told me to come back in a week. So we reserved an extra week here at the KOA, and uh, and we went back, follow up. Everything seems good. I won't, I'm not gonna need surgery, but um, at this point we want to get back home. And uh, by the way, I want to thank everybody who who offered to drive us back. Uh, we're gonna see if Illy can make it. I think she can. Uh, I'm gonna take it slow. I'll be her co-pilot. And um, we're heading home. And uh, unfortunately, the trip has been truncated, interrupted. But, um, but we'll get back on the road soon enough, I hope. Until the next one, thank you so much uh, for watching. 
and see you on the road. I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Cause I'm free in my RV, yeah. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, in my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because yeah, I'm free in my RV, riding, riding, from Florida to Tennessee, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV, yeah. Riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV, yeah, I'm riding, 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 I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free. In my RV, yeah, I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm. Welcome to New Mexico. Oh, thank you.
Welcome to Louisiana. I'm more than halfway home I'm getting tired, I'm getting sleepy I've been away for too long I'm thinking of a song I'm getting close, I'm a believer That tonight I'll be home Driving to the east Oh, thank you I'm going home I have been away For too long Driving to the east Riding in 